AquarianRadio.com Aloha, this is Dr. Sasha Lesson. I want you to listen to Aquarian Radio. We have a variety of shows, 10 to 11, Hawaiian Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Mondays, we have all Chakra Tantra. Tuesdays, alternate relationships programming and love style. Wednesday, our counseling corner. Thursday, experiencers and the paranormal. And Friday, ancient aliens. AquarianRadio.com Join us on Aquarian Radio for Extraterrestrial Radio, Paranormal People, and Experiencers Network. We explore past lives, future lives, life between lives, near-death experiences, ghosts, discarnates, interdimensionals, metaphysics, Bigfoot, and other mystical, mythical beings. We talk about aliens, abductees, contactees, experiencers, hybrids, sightings, channeling, Galactic Federation, Council of Light and Love, and more. Join us Thursdays for Experiences Network. Call 646-649-0893 or join us in the chat room. See you then. Aloha, I'm Dr. Sasha Lesson, and I uh, regularly regress people and uh, see where they go. And uh, my colleague John Mack had been telling me about how many of his uh, patients wound up having experiences that were revealed under hypnosis of being abducted by aliens. Well, I started doing these uh, sessions with my wife, and much to my uh, surprise and amazement and delight, I found that she had a whole store of alien contacts, including abductions. And so I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to Janet uh, Kira Lesson, who um, is a wonderful UFO researcher and who has been abducted plenty of times and has gotten knowledge that I think can help all of us. Say hello to the folks, Janet. Hi, aloha, everybody. Um, yeah, I, I like to call myself an experiencer because abductee has a connotation of being a victim, and I don't really feel like a victim. I feel like I've been contacted by extraterrestrials, interdimensionals, and higher beings, and that there's a message, a message for me personally and for humanity, and it's a positive message about awakening and becoming conscious and aware of our role in the Galactic Federation of which we are seeking membership, although we're not conscious of it right now, but we are being tested by them for potential membership in the Federation, and this is our trial period. The planet has been quarantined, and uh, anyway, so there's a lot of things that I've uncovered through these uh, hypnotherapy regression sessions with uh, my beloved Dr. Sasha Lesson, who's my husband. I'm very fortunate. I married my shrink, and... uh, also, um, I've had I had some conscious memories of uh, experiences which we use. So I I might recall some missing time or something that was peculiar, and in our, our hypnotherapy sessions, uh, Doctor Lesson will ask me to go deeper, and he hypnotizes me, and it's amazing what comes out. So go ahead. Um. Well, let me just uh, say that. Um, one of the questions is, uh, to what degree are you uh, complicit or wanting or uh, inviting the contact, and to what degree uh, is this contact something uh, inflicted upon you, which is not um, with your permission or will? Could you address that, please? Well, for me, uh, at first, uh, when I was a very young child, it appeared to be a continuation of my existence before I came into physicality. So it was invited contact. As my parents and other people reacted to my stories about contact, I didn't want them to happen. I wanted to be quote unquote normal. 
And to be normal, uh, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, you, you were a child who was not having contact with invisible beings or people that other um, people that other people couldn't see. So I think that I came in with some more DNA activated. I was able to see beyond a certain level and hear beyond a certain level. And so, so it became conscious and then unconscious. And it always, it's always remained a mystery to me because the contact never stopped. It, even though I'd said no, don't, no contact, it didn't stop. But for a while, it seemed to not happen on a conscious level. So my conscious mind was able to react and think that I was going through life normally. But as you and I have discovered in regression sessions, there's been uh, continual contact my entire life. And there's rarely been a, you know, a time period, uh, there has been a long time period where nothing's happened. I think, uh, and I think my story might be what's happening to many people. So that's one reason to explore this. It's not only for my own personal curiosity and, and health and well-being, but it's just a global phenomenon that's happening. And that's the work of Dr. John Mack. And that's the work that um, I've done professionally with you, Dr. Lesson, with other contactees and abductees and experiencers. Yeah, well, Dr. Mack, uh, uh, I had asked him, uh, you know, uh, all these uh, UFO things that we hear about, some people say that there are military, some people say it's our military working with the so-called greys, and some say it's entirely the greys. And when I, uh, one of the most dramatic uh, experiences that uh, Janet uh, will tell us about in a few minutes has to do with uh, when both the military and the greys uh, were involved. And uh, when I mentioned this to uh, Dr. Mack, he uh, said, I, I can't go there. It's like, it's, there's, um, he, he seemed afraid, like there was something that he was forbidden to talk about. And not long afterwards, he was um, killed under mysterious uh, circumstances. And so uh, this is pretty scary stuff for some people. But in any case, Janet has this incredible, important experience that uh, sheds light on the whole thing when she was working at Johnson Atoll in the Pacific. Would you tell us about that, Janet? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm going to go into level one, then we're going to take a commercial break and I can explore deeper what we uncovered under hypnosis in level two. But level one is what I recovered consciously and this is the most in-depth um, recollection I have had for my entire life. Um, and, and I was amazed that I wasn't made to forget. Normally what they do after an abduction experience, uh, the abductors um, render you unconscious and they uh, probably put in some kind of post-hypnotic uh, suggestion or some kind of drug, something that they anchor in that you are not to remember on a conscious or level. Or an implant. Or an implant. We're not sure we're doing the research on this, but I totally recalled this episode and and I knew that they wanted me to remember. So uh, just to give you a brief uh, overview, because we're going to have to go to a commercial break soon, is that I was um, in Johnson Atoll, which is a remote location. It's a uh, secret military base. Actually, the base isn't secret, but you can't get on unless you have top-level security. I was admitted to Johnson Atoll because uh, somehow my boyfriend who worked there pulled some strings, and he had grown up in the military. His parents had been in the Black Projects and uh, working in the nuclear facility, so he got me there. Go ahead. The, the, the base uh, that is wasn't a secret is the one that's on top of the ground. Janet's going to tell you about uh, more about this. What's under that? Yeah, a little bit of background of uh, Johnson Atoll. So in the 1940s for World War II, the official story is that they dug these deep trenches uh, so that the submarines could get in, and they built up all the surrounding um, islands and coral into a central island, which looks like a landing field from the air. It looks like an aircraft carrier when, you, when you're when you coming in. And they're probably, you just uh, Google it, uh, listeners, Johnston Atoll, A-T-O-L-L, or Johnston Island, and they're, uh, they've been taking down images, but there are still some images and there's some YouTube, so you can take a look at the facility. So in the deep part of the water, uh, you can see from the air, it's, it's a deep, deep blue on the one side of the island. Uh, that's where the underwater installation is, and I was taken to an underwater installation. So what happened was, um, when I was there on Johnson Atoll, my boyfriend, 
who was the one that got me in there, he, he, he was an alcoholic and he got fired. He was a soldier. And he was civilian working oh, for the military oh, oh. at that time, but he had been in the Air Force uh, in, when he was much younger. Oh. But he never lost his military connection because he, um, his parents were involved in the Black Project, so he, had, he was connected to the military and and once they once you're in the military they always keep tabs on you so that's what I my understanding so anyway he um, left and so I he said you know it was a very lonely place he says you know get a lover it was okay with him and so I took a lover and I was in bed with my lover and we looked up and we saw the um, uh, what do you call the, the smoke alarm, smoke detector, and we realized after making love that this is not a um, smoke detector, or it's more than a smoke detector. We realized that they were listening and they could probably see what was going on. And we said that, we stated it, and we're looking up at the smoke detector. So within 24 hours to 48 hours of that statement, I was taken from my bed by six grays, the typical grays that you see on Whitley's Driver's Communion book and you see on all the commercials. Describe them. Well, they have the larger heads and the big al almond eyes and they, they are kind of um, pale colored. I don't think they're necessarily gray, but they they definitely don't look like human skin of any uh, any color. So they're, um, anyway, so the, and they tend to be shorter, you know, but mine I think were probably about four to five feet tall, but I was never standing beside them, so it's hard to really determine exactly how tall they were because they were carrying me for one thing, so I couldn't really tell how tall they were. What did it feel like where they were touching you? Um, well, I was just in terror. Um, I was uh, screaming, bloody murder. They took me out of my bed. They're, they're carrying me like a surfboard. Um, I'm on my back. I'm I'm looking, I'm looking at these hands all over me, and they are three finger, three fingers with one opposing tongue. Um, I mean thumb, and they're kind of bulbous looking at the end, and they're very long, much longer than human fingers, and so they wrapped around my arms and legs and then some, you know, and they were carrying me, and there were six of them, so I had. All these hands and like I said carry me like surfboard and they were on various parts of me and I'm looking all around and I'm screaming bloody murder uh, because there's these alien beings carrying me and so um, anyway we've got to do a commercial break I need I need this here sorry about that so I'm gonna leave it there and <laughs> Sorry, we lost our mouse, so I couldn't do the control board. Get the cat. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. We found our mouse, so now I can control the control board. But anyway, I just, I just want to give you that part. They gave, they were carrying me, and I'm screaming blood or, bloody murder, and I'm wondering why can't anybody hear me? Um, I'm on this island. It's only a half mile by three miles wide, and um, you know I can scream like you know something they would record for a Hollywood horror film, and nobody was rescuing me. And the 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 gray that was carrying me on the, my right front my right front foot, yeah you know, my right foot. He was in the front of me. He said, "Go ahead and scream all you want. No one can hear you. You're in an energy field." He, he said that. What was his voice like? It was telepathic, so nobody has to use their their mouths in, in the alien world. It's all telepathic communication, and you understand it completely, and it doesn't really feel like much of anything, it's, but you're aware that it's not your voice. It's just, a, it's just someone talking to you. And um, so then let's pause now for our commercial break, and we'll see you again in a short while. Aloha for now. You're listening to Aquarian Radio with your hosts, Dr. Sasha and Janet Lesson. Make sure to tune in every Tuesdays for all Chakra Tantra, Love Styles, and Counseling Lessons. On Wednesdays for Extraterrestrial Radio, Paranormal People, and Experiencers Network. And on Thursdays for Anki Speaks, Ancient Anthropology, and NIMA. Remember to share the wisdom with your friends and loved ones at AquarianRadio.com. AquarianRadio.com. 